Um, David, would you be tempted to put a plastic bag over a ULES camera? I must say, when uh, the equivalent was introduced in a low-traffic neighbourhood where I live in Islington, yes, because of the gross irrationality of the thing, the division of neighbourhoods, the making of local transport completely impossible, and above all, in the case of LTNs, the deliberate moving of traffic into places where pedestrians go. It's lunatic. You deliberately create congestion and therefore traffic fumes and whatever. But I think, dare I say, I think there's a, a a bigger point, which I think you know, we can all do the thing, wouldn't it be nice to, 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 to sort of spray paint at the things. My great anxiety is that transport for London, going right back to its beginnings when it created the congestion charge, has deliberately confused what is supposedly penal, that's to say a charge for doing something which is illegitimate, like and going into central London, which we disapprove of, or a polluting car, and turned it essentially into a revenue stream. This is a deliberate confusion of two things. It is profoundly hostile to all the things that you were talking about in terms of good government. And I'm afraid it's going back to the 18th century and the state becoming dangerously parasitic. And environmentalism is increasingly leading to a parasitic state that doesn't actually facilitate the individual. It interferes with them in wholly arbitrary, preposterous and increasingly, as you said, unpopular ways. Problem, it's, called, yeah. it's called environmental socialism. Yeah, Stephen, you're in, favor, yes. you're in favour of the ULEs. Yeah. You'll yeah. therefore be against these proposals. But yeah. do you think it's important to govern with consent? Well, I was about to say the key word here is consent. I'm in favour of the central London ULEs. And I think if you look at all the, the major changes that have been brought in in, in in London in terms of transport, you know, petrol uh, you know, without lead in it, seat belts, no drink driving, you know, there's been a whole range of things um, which have been brought in. But they've been brought in after discussion and with consent. I remember Barbara Castle making the case for seatbelts. Very, very. Everybody understands nowadays that you don't have lead in petrol and you don't drive without a seatbelt and you don't drink drive. We're fine with that. The problem with you, Liz, and, and we do have a, I mean, thanks, thanks for you, we do have a democracy. We have a vote next year. Um, and I, I think that uh, Sadek Khan will have to actually listen to a lot of people on this because it's now become an inner and an outer London. Now, I appreciate that uh, the audience for, for this programme is national, if not international, but in a London perspective, that I'm but these ULEZs are happening across the country. Well, uh, somebody said, to, somebody said to me the other day when I was oh, arguing yeah. about it, said, oh, yes, but they're doing it in Paris. And I said, well, there's a good example, isn't there? <laughs> but, but, but I think David's point is so important yeah, yeah, that yeah. the state is using law yeah. to apply charges for revenue raising. Isn't that fundamentally no, I'm sorry. unjust? I, I could totally disagree with that. Look, I, I think ULEZ should not be extended to the, to the outer London boroughs because all the indicators, all the data that we have talks about air pollution in the centre zone and that needs to be addressed. It simply shouldn't apply to the outer London boroughs. But the thing, the thing about it being a revenue stream, the amount of money that this country spends on respiratory diseases and problems in the National Health Service is vastly more than anything we could actually oh, gain. Oh, nonsense. In, in, well, I'm sorry. And, and so it's been this, this is an absurdity. And also the difference that these yeah. things make is tiny in comparison with the profound dislocation to people's lives. And I think this is something that we are, I'm afraid, in the whole environmental agenda, we are now confronting this, uh, or should be confronting this. We have, in fact, single-issue fanatics. Repeatedly in the whole area of government, you know, and, uh, Nature England and you know, the prioritisation of new newts over building, Area after area, you have a single issue committee determining matters of very broad impact on people's lives. And this is simply the wrong way of going about sorry, it. I, because, I, again, but for, just one sorry, second, sorry, yeah. a fundamental problem is the yeah. nature yeah. of the London mayoralty. Fundamentally, the mayor is only really transport commissioner. This means that he... Well, and police, but he does yeah, yeah, But, but the funda yeah, which, 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 which he shares with, with the Home Secretary. So but if fundamentally he's a transport commissioner, this is not how you run local government. Local government should be looking at the broad range of issues, not simply focusing on the one thing. I think we've widened it out far, far wider um, than even the ULEZ zone here, because you know, we're now talking about much, much wider issues here. If we just actually stick to ULEZ at the moment, the, the fact remains is that um, Sadek Khan was in Ealing Town Hall 
couple of weeks ago and there was a lot of people protesting and I think injudiciously he, he made the comparison between those protesting he said as, as anti-vaxxers and I think that's a, a, a real problem there I think the mayor needs to actually make the case and actually bring the people with him but I, I, I do want to come I, back to David's point which I don't yeah, think you answered yeah, yeah. on using fines <laughs> yeah. as a revenue raising measure mm. when fines are there to enforce mm. fair law but it's like how, parking. How, how, it's like parking. Transport again, for yeah. London's given the game away yeah. on this. It has set a target yeah. for speeding yeah. fines. Yeah. Surely that is totally well, antithetic sorry. to the rule of law. How, how else would you enforce the congestion charge without a fine? But that's it right. becomes but about the fines, not about the right. congestion. Yeah, how, how else would you enforce no, but, it? So, but, but first of all, it's perfectly clear that the congestion charge isn't actually about reducing congestion in London. It, but is, it has. It, it, on the contrary, yeah. congestion in London is actually, the evidence is greater than it's ever been because it's deliberately generated by traffic, so-called traffic calming measures. I mean, the problem is that we're dealing with a whole series of utterly logically contradictory things. But um, for me, it is the use of the legal process of nominal fining, be it you know parking fines, be it ULES fines or whatever, actually to generate a revenue stream. Councils now do not depend on council tax. They depend on this, you know, what what frankly is 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 the equivalent of the, the 19th century, sorry, the, the, the 16th century procurer, the kind of people who, who have a patent. Yeah, sorry. It, it, that just simply isn't true. I mean, you can't then spread around any receipts um, from parking fines and local authorities. It's ring fenced to highways and transportation issues. So it doesn't. It, that it, means it, it just, uh, they just put in more bollards to stop people well, moving I'm around. Sorry, but that doesn't apply in central London. I think there's a real problem here that people do not differentiate between central and outer London. And I think we have to realise I would say, you will. We all know the first traffic lights were put in Park Lane in the 1920s. Because well, the first one was in um, at the Parliament end of your Square, street, I think. But thank you, my brilliant <laughs> panel.